I was triggering him with that girl. Oh my gosh. Grab the rod. Yeah. And good morning, Fishalots. It's dark o'clock in the morning. It hurts to be alive. And of course, we're heading out to go flounder fishing or good old fluke fishing. Flatties, whatever you want to call them. They're delicious, they're fun to catch. I got my gulp, I got my rods and reels. I packed up all my gear. And now we're gonna take that drive all the way down to Cape May, New Jersey, fishing with Captain Tom Daffin of Fishing Fever. And we're gonna catch some really nice fish, I'm sure. All right. Let's get into it. And all right, so after completing my dark o'clock in the morning drive to Cape May, I'm going to grab my fluke and rods right here and go ahead and board the fishing fever with my good friend, Tom Daffin. Now, as you saw in the beginning of this video, you know, we are actually going to catch some really nice fish, but we're going to have to overcome some challenges as you saw there to do it. So follow me along on this trip. You know, it's not just like you hit the water and the fish just jump in the boat for you. A lot of YouTube channels want to make you think that, but not here on Fishing with Johnny Fish a lot. I want to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly of every fishing trip because that's what makes it fun. And when you share those experiences with people like we got on the cruise, today or on the boat today the crew you're really going to enjoy your fishing trips so hope you enjoy the video let's get straight into it Maybe. yeah now it's a netter definitely a netter Feels like a big fish yeah it's nice that's nice and now and there you go. Just want to give you a quick teaser of the quality of fish that we're really going to catch on this trip. But first, we're going to get through this fog, and that is just nasty stuff. You can see Tom monitoring that radar like a fox who don't hit anything. You see that sun's just trying to come up and burn it off for us, but that fog's going to persist through the morning. Now, take a look at those dangling hooks right there. I'm not sure whose rods those are, but just make a mental note of that because that's going to come back as the first lesson learned here. First and foremost, of course, let me introduce you to the Fish A Lot crew. Many of you will notice that guy right there, Steve, who has become a Fish A Lot fan favorite here on Fishing with Johnny Fish A Lot. And we fish all the time together, and this video will be no different. You know, it's an honor. It's really oh, okay. That's good. That's good. Now, don't catch all the fish. Don't be catching all the fish today. Let, the, let, let, the, let, the, let JJ catch it. And so there was seven-year-old JJ and his dad, Jason. Let me introduce you to the rest of the crew. You know Steve over there on the starboard side. That's Jim over there in the corner. And Lee is the guy right next to me there in the white shirt. JJ's in between Lee and his dad, Jason. And JJ is absolutely going to put on a clinic today. But to start, you know me, if you follow my channel for a while, I always start off with gulp. So I'm going to start off with this salmon red gulp. I make sure it's put on there perfectly straight and we're going to get fishing. Now this is going to be the very first drop and I on my line as it goes out from the spool right there. You just saw it go out. There's a tangle about 50 feet inside of the spool. I have no idea how it gets there, but this is the very first drop. So of course I have to reel it back in. I'm going to have to cut away all that line and I'm going to just have to retie super super frustrating so here's my next rod coming down remember i had four rods and i'm going to go through three of them really really quick on the first two drifts so time to rebate right i gotta get my gulp out i gotta rebate it and redrop <laughs> and so there you just heard me uh, frustratedly exhale i haven't even got my bait in the water but my second drop is not going to be much better so you're gonna see it right here. Immediately I'm hung in the wreck. This is just the second drift. First drift caught nothing. I had a tangle, I had to cut it away. Second drift, hung in the wreck. Lenny here hooks up into a huge fish right here. We all got excited about this big fish. Let's see what happens here. Shit. 
<laughs> yeah, so you just heard Steve, he missed a few fish too. And uh, it just kind of set the pace for the morning here. We're just missing fish, having a great time. Here I go, I gotta break this off. Now, lesson learned here, never grab braid with just your hand. You see, I wrapped my sleeve around my hand. That braid will cut you so bad. So just use something so you don't get cut, break it off. There you go, second drop, second rod, and I'm gonna have to grab the third rod. First casualty. And this rod and reel combo you see coming out right now is really, really awesome for fluking as well. This is gonna be a Maxell Hybrid 20 for the reel, and that's gonna be paired up on a Tsunami slow pitch jigging rod, and it is absolutely fantastic. I'll have a link in the description below of all this gear. This stuff is really great for inshore fishing, all sorts of species of fish. And of course, there's JJ, he's hooked up. I told you, keep an eye on that seven-year-old. He's gonna catch the first fish and the last fish of this trip, and he's really gonna put on a clinic. And that fish you see right there, that's gonna be a slot fish between 17 and 18 inches, which is gonna be hugely helpful for us because the bite in the morning is so slow, a lot of us are gonna try to catch some flounder off of flounder ribbons. And make no mistake about it, flounder ribbons is absolutely a fantastic bait. So let's be clear about this. In the state of New Jersey, you're allowed to fillet one fish out of your bag limit that's a legal regulation size fish. So in the case of New Jersey, you got two fish, you're allowed between 17 to 18 inches and one fish you're allowed over 18 inches. So JJ picks up the first slot fish. That fish is between 17 and 18 inches. And we're gonna make super good use of those ribbons right there to catch some fish because this early morning bite is gonna be really hard. So thank you again, JJ, for, <laughs> for helping us out with some fresh bait. Got a hook in my head. Thanks. Better to have than my skull. And so this is going to be the second fish of the day in the boat. And it's going to be a beautiful little sea bass there. I mean, these are the prettiest fish in the ocean. And they're some of the best tasting fish in the ocean as well. Now, remember I said, keep in mind those dangling hooks right there when I was explaining the fog. And yep, you betcha. One of those hooks, that one on the bottom rod holder there caught me right in the head as I was trying to de-hook that sea bass. So this is really how you should rig up your rods or your hooks when you're not using them. See that? So I got my bucktail, I got my teaser. I'm just gonna hook them around the handle of my rod. This way they're not dangling, they're not in people's face and I hook people in the head. Let's see it one more time. You take the hooks, you put them together, they're hooked together so they can't possibly hook you and they're at the base of the rod when you put it in the rod holder, not dangling right in front of your face. So now thanks to JJ catching that slot fish, we have a couple of different options here for bait. So I got gulp on the bottom bait on the bucktail, and I got a piece of flounder ribbon on a tsunami glass minnow on the top as a teaser. And so we're gonna start to pick together a little bit of a catch through a tough bite. I'm feeling some heads. Nah, it's a I'll flip them. And here's another quick tip when you're handling flounder, right? A lot of people, they'll grab right by the gills and they'll squeeze that flounder because they're super slippery. There's no reason to do that, especially with catch and release because you're really damaging the fish. Just go ahead and lay the fish right there on the gunnel, just like you saw me do. Carefully take out the hook and that fish is ready to go back just like that. And you know, when the bite is slow, you know, we like to compare our fishing gear, tell fishing stories. So right here, me and Lee are gonna get into it with very similar fluking gear that we have. We're both using that Tsunami slow pitch chicken rod and we absolutely love it for fluke. Yeah, what do you got there? Is that a Tsunami? Yeah. That's what I got, yeah. I love these rods. This is, uh, I, put, I guess, four and a half. I don't know what number it is. This is Tsunami slow pitch. Not for the price, I think they're really good. They're under a hundred bucks. This is this is six eight. This is six eight. Uh, what's we what got? Twenty to twenty to fifty line capacity there. No, this is uh, thirty pounds. Oh, so yours is a little bit heavier than mine. Yeah, hundred grams. Uh, 
some small little obstacles to overcome here is of course uh, some of the crew got their lines tangled in the running gear and the props it's in the running gear Yeah, and after overcoming a little bit of frustration there, the Bucktails ended up not getting into the props. So Jim in the back here catches yet another nice slot fish. But take a look at this. After we throw the fish in the cooler, what happens next? I don't know if the shoe's close. No, solid slot. Huh? Good. Good. I was, I was triggering him with that. Oh, oh my gosh. Grab the rod. Yeah. Oh, wait. Let me, let me have your rod. Let me have your rod. Can I go in? No. No. Sorry. Yeah. Never ideal to lose your rod on a fishing boat, but even less ideal to jump overboard after the rod on a fishing boat, especially on the middle of the ocean. Which makes this kind of funny, though, is, is that Jason there is actually Lee's nephew. And uh, JJ is Lee's great nephew, I guess. And uh, so this is all Lee's gear. <laughs> so, so the whole rest of the trip, we're going to have a great time telling fish and rod lost stories over the side of the boat. It's going to be great. I thought you had it when you said... Uh, There's a fish on that. On the, uh, on there? Rod. Yeah, yeah, you don't go in after a rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always stay in the boat. That's the number one rule. Yeah. Stay in the boat. What, what I'm not allowed to say, yeah, dive in. I'm not allowed to say that. My insurance company is like, I have a boat. Now, Lenny catches a really nice flounder next to me. I think it was like 23 inches or so. And I catch this beautiful little sea robin here. I think these are some of the coolest fish in the ocean. Just take a look at that guy. They got those big fins on the side, right? Those peck fins are just awesome. And they got those little feelers underneath their chins. So they could dig around in the sand and pick out crustaceans, little fish and whatever. These are just so, so cool, these little fish. And you know, they get a bad rap. They get like kind of like a junk fish type of feeling to it. But if you've got kids on the boat or you're fishing, I mean, this is just the coolest thing ever. And for flounder fishing, because we are in need of bait because it's a tough bite, they also make really great bait. And he's going right in the box, but I'm going to cut him up and that'll be more meat strips for these flounders. Come here first. 
Why? You got to Everybody up. On the go. On the go. All go, Steve. over there. Yeah, nice one. Nice one, bud. Yeah, that's, there's your picture. Yeah, let me take, I want to take a picture. I'm going to take a good net job. That's a good net job right there. Quick is out. Flounders in. Oh, another nice one. Yeah. Yep. Been doing the trick. Nope, no bait. That's a good one. Nice job, bud. And just take a look at how aggressive these fish are. Look at the size of that bait versus the size of that flounder. And they go after it. They tear those baits up and they tear up bait fish just like that. So don't be surprised at how small or how big a fish a flounder or fluke you can catch using really big size baits. It's good thing JJ's here. So we all got some dinner tonight. JJ on again. Here, I'm going to get you now. Full. Full. No, there you go. Full, uh, full picture here. JJ just getting it done. Little guy. Let's put him up here. There you go, nice fish. JJ's on a big one. Stone. Cut that rig off. <laughs> yeah, right. Keep cranking, buddy. Keep cranking. Keep it tight. He's fighting you, huh, buddy? Keep turning the hand. You gotta be careful to get home. No, it's not. Oh, right. Definitely okay. louder. No. <laughs> Whoa, nice one. Got him. Good one, buddy. Yeah, oh, another no. nice one. Ah, He's catching overs for the whole boat. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a good one there. All right. That's a real good one. That's a real good one right there. Maybe. Took drag though. Yeah, so he's still a big fish. Oh, they get the net. Hey, Dave, see it. Can't get your bait in the water, buddy. You're all set, ready to go. Okay. Oh, big head checks. Big head checks. Love it. Put him in that box right there. Put him in that box. That's a good one. That's a good one. See, Steve? Yeah, that's a nice one. There you go. Nice. Nice job, buddy. That's a nice fish. Uh, here we go. 
much? He's like, how much I owe you? I said, I don't want to tell you yet. He's like, how much do I owe you? There you go. Right? I was like, it's a $450 outfit. Dude, reaches right in his pocket, pulls out $450. Let's keep it tight. Pulls out $450 and hands it to me, right? He goes, and I give me another rock. I said, I don't know if I can or not. He goes, why not? He goes, why not? I said, you got another 450 on you just in case, right? He's like, give me a rock, Tom. <laughs> We're on our way in. That is, you got him? We're on our, we're on our way in. His nephew is walking around with my extra tough suit. Right? And he's going, we're taking up a collection for Uncle Joe's rock. <laughs> 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 we could start that. We could get a collection going for Lenny's missing rod. We can do that. I'm just dragging on. Yeah, we got to circle back at that rod. And as I said, little JJ here is really putting on a clinic on this boat. And, you know, typically speaking, a lot of folks will just chalk it off and say, well, you know, he's a kid. Kids always catch the biggest fish or beginner's luck or anyone of those number of things. But I don't buy into that at all. A matter of fact, I say it all the time on Fishing with Johnny Fish a lot. You always got to be paying attention what everybody on the boat is doing because there's certain nuances that those fish will really respond to. And those fish are telling you what they want during the course of the day. They want the presentation slower or faster. Whatever JJ is doing, it's working. And we all kind of picked up on it. We're watching the seven-year-old and we adapted our tactics to JJ because he was catching the fish, and then the whole boat started catching. We started doing a really good job at the end of the day. We just had to sort it out. So if you want to leave your ego at the door and figure out how to catch fish more consistently, paying attention to these little nuances and adapting your tactics to fill that boat with some delicious flatties, go ahead and click on this end card right here where I dive deeper into changing tactics and changing ways to fish in order to trigger more bites and catch more fish.